Welcome back to Sports Vibe. We are actually going to start with the NFC East and AFC West previews to start our uh, football preview, NFL preview series. Um, pretty exciting stuff. Uh, I guess it's like our first mini series of of the of the show, whatever it was. Sports Vibe, the starting lineup, all of that good stuff. You know, training camps are about to start. They've already started. You know, actually, the Jets have got things going already. I've been seeing some highlights from their camp. So, I mean, we'll get to the AFC East. I'm excited about that one probably next week, along with the NFC West. So, stay tuned for that. And I want to split up some of the more exciting divisions. So, that's why we're doing the NFC East and AFC West. And, yeah, we're going to mix it up a little bit. Um, get one AFC, one NFC, and then one North, South, East, West. We're pairing it up like that. So, first pair up is the NFC East followed by the AFC West. And... We're get, let's just get things started right away with the NFC East. First of all, we've got the New York Giants, which is my favorite team, wearing the jersey, obviously. But um, it's been a busy offseason for the Giants. I mean, I think the main focus with, with New York um, is Saquon Barkley with this holdout. Um, you know, I don't know what the deal is now. Like, I mean, the, I, I would assume he's going to end up playing on the franchise tag, but he'll probably sit some time out, whether that be training camp. He's kind of left unclear whether he's going to actually sit out multiple games or possibly the season but i believe he's gonna end up signing probably like right before week one so he doesn't lose any money if anything maybe he misses a few games but we'll have to see daniel jones got the big contract and that might come back to bite the giants we'll have to see they did add james robinson recently um you know they added um a cole beasley so back of running backs they have a fear gray they drafted they got Matt Breida, james robinson gary brightwell um, other free agent pickups, Darren Waller, Paris Campbell, um, Bobby Okariki on the defense, Aishan Robinson, Kim Nunez Rochez. Um, I just mentioned James Robinson and um a receiver. Cole Beasley, there's tons of weapons on this team with Waller, Campbell, um, you know, obviously Slay, um, Darius Slay and Sterling Shepard. And then we've got, let's see if Isaiah Hodgins has another big season. He had one last year. We've got Bellinger, Jalen Hyatt. Cole Beasley, um, Wandale Robinson, they're going to have to cut that down to six or seven guys. There's other guys on the roster as well. They also drafted John Michael Schmidt's offensive line looks good. We're going to see Evan Neal, Andrew Thomas, Deontay Banks on defense. I mean, obviously on the defense, secondary looks great. McKinney, uh, Dory Jackson on the line. They extended um, Dexter Williams. Uh, I think they still have to extend Leonard Williams. Not sure what the deal with that is. They did not do that. And then... um. Kayvon Thibodeau, obviously, Aziz Oshilari, the, um, obviously Bobby Okariki getting him is huge. That's going to be exciting and on the Giants' defense. And, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much sums up the roster. I believe we've got Graham Gano and Jamie Gillen on uh, special teams there. So, up-and-coming Giants team. Depends mm-hmm. on yeah, the... So, we'll see how the, how the record plays mm-hmm. out. I think they might go something around 9-8, 10-7, yeah, but... something where they were last year, obviously. I don't think they're going to beat the Eagles. Um, at least not in the standings. They might be able to beat Dallas once. If the Eagles rest their stars, might beat them once. There might be a few upsets in there, but I have them right around 9-8, nine, 9-8, eight, nine and eight, 10 and 7. There's a few toss-up games. I think they might be able to take one from Dallas. Like I said, it could be Philly, it could be the Seahawks. I mean, Seahawks could beat them. I have them as a Giants win. The Jets are going to be very interesting to figure out if they're going to actually be that good. They are probably a Giants loss. If not, Giants could win. Or if they fall off, it could be 7-10. Ceiling is probably really like out of reach, but maybe 12-5. and five, And they'd probably still finish behind the Eagles in the division. And that would have to that would be one and one against Philly, Dallas, and a win over someone else that the Giants shouldn't beat. So we'll, we'll see. I, I'm expecting 9 and 8 around 10 and 7. The Giants have a pretty good roster based on names, especially on the offensive side on the ball. Uh, defensive side, they have um, an all-pro level player in uh, Dexter Lawrence just calling up the middle. And they also have uh, pr- a pretty good uh, rotation of uh, defensive tackles um, and defensive edges. Uh, as you said, uh, Kayvon Thibodeau, hopefully he's, you know, he's much better than he was last year. And, you know, yeah. he was great last year, especially towards the end, too. It was the um, strip sack and touchdown against uh, Washington. Um, and then there was, a, you know, um, he played... Even if the stat show didn't show up, he also, you know, helped uh, give a lot of pressure on Kirk Cousins in the playoff game. And um, as long as this roster remains healthy and, you know, they don't play and they play complimentary football, yeah, there's no reason to think that they shouldn't finish with the winning record. However, 
Uh, the Eagles and the Cowboys have better rosters. Uh, uh, have be- have as good or better rosters on paper. Re- really, and... I think the I think the Cowboys have a quite well, flawed roster. Yeah, well, yeah, you could agree that too. Actually, you know, uh, well, as good or but, but I e- think Eagles, Eagles are going. Eagles are yeah, going yeah, to are going are going to run the NFC. I mean, That's as, not a as, question. As, assuming they don't break the curse, they should. Win, <laughs> right, and right. it shouldn't be close. Um, I, honestly, they're, they're, I think the Giants. No weakness for them. I think the Giants really can finish isn't. second in the NFC East. I I think they'll mm-hmm. finish above Dallas. I I, and I'm saying this as someone who, passionately despises the Giants. Like, I think the Cowboys roster, is quite flawed, and uh, there's certainly a lot of uh, parts, that, are not exactly cohesive, and, so I mean I mean they're not in Washington. That's like. That's like the only saving grace that the Cowboys can really say. But I mean, for, for, let's forget about like playoff talk right now. We can save that for a that's a that's a whole different ball game. We could save that for a lot later. But I think like the way the Cowboys are structured, they're way too dependent on quarterback success. Like you yeah. see the Giants, like the Giants won games where they didn't need Daniel Jones to turn into Josh Allen or something like. The Giants, mm-hmm. the Giants have showed that they can that they can succeed on offense with or with Daniel Jones having a good quarterback game. So, I I mean, and that's who Daniel Jones is a fairly efficient runner. So, I like like you know it, it's quite obvious that that I think like I mean I'm not saying Daniel Jones is better than Dak Prescott. No one will ever say that except for Giants fans. And even then, I don't know about that. Mm, but probably not. But, yeah. But the thing is, the Giants are not dependent on Daniel Jones throwing for 400 yards and five touchdowns every single game to to win. That's why they're able. That's why they're able to, you know, be fairly consistent now. Well, why they should be. Dallas is way too hell bent on on Dak carrying them. Because, I mean, sure, you have names on defense. You have Trayvon Diggs, who uh, was definitely was a uh, interceptions leader. But mm-hmm. also, if you know, if you've watched a lot of Trayvon Diggs' film, you'll see how you'll see how he's, much he, like he's a pure ball hawk. He's not, yeah, no, he's either interception or like you'll you'll probably end up or, going or, scoring, yeah, or you'll rack up for yeah, or you'll rack up for yards on him because exactly it, because of how much he over pursues. So like. You know, right, like, right. I mean, it's it's great you have a cornerback who sticks with the wide receiver like Lou, but at the same time, when you put when you put so much when you put so much energy into into doing that, you make one small slip up like, you know, on a crossing pattern instead of like instead of like uh, going directly with the receiver, if you try to jump in by a couple of yards and and snatch it away, you take you're not taking away the overhead option. So I so like. Trayvon Diggs, I'd honestly consider as a liability, despite his ability to probably. Well, he rack was up. better. He was better last year. He yeah, he, he was. Didn't, he was he 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 wasn't like the guy. I mean, like sure, he did. You know, he played pretty poorly in the season opener, and and but after that, he was pretty good. He was, you know, he was playing really good. Yeah, I, I he was I better know, like, last year for sure. Like, you can change you can change play style, but you can't like you can change mentality. But you can't miss merely necessarily change play style. So like, I think Trayvon Diggs is more like, in t- in terms of like in terms of like a opposing receiver coverage, I think he's more of a liability in that sense. I'm not saying that he sucks. I'm just saying like, I think his play style he's, it can be a bit yeah. liable for the Cowboys. Because remember, he was a receiver. He was a receiver before, and his brother's a receiver. And his brother is is a is a very very good receiver. Very good receiver, yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know about very good. It's definitely oh, in the he's in definitely the top, top tier. tier. Yeah, top, top tier. That. You mm-hmm. know, he was the receiving yards and his receptions leader one year. I think he is a very good player. Both the Diggs players are, and there's right. no you know, doubting that. And, and you know, they're, yeah. they're also they're also great at uh, losing playoff games. That's the part I like about them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, though we can't put that on them, you know, but yes, admittedly can. they were quiet in both of their matchups. But Diggs played great in the Tampa Bay game. 
He played good in the San Francisco game just because San Francisco was, you know, more of a conservative offense than, you know, especially to start out. After, you know, after that, no. And, you know, speaking of, you know, conservative offenses, um, now you have the, um, now you have the commanders out, you know. What are they going to do with, you know. Can you really call them an offense? Can you really call that team having an offense? Well, then again. Dan Schneider just recently sold the team, so yeah, already like Washington fans have won the Super Bowl. Like the, mm-hmm. this, this entire yeah. season could go on strike for them, and they they're immediately exactly. champions of the off season. Fair, fair, fair. Yeah. So um, I guess just to highlight all three teams, I don't think we're gonna have time to go through the full roster breakdowns, but for the Cowboys, mm-hmm. obviously, I think a major thing with them is Zeke being you know, pretty much released. Tony Pollard is going to be their go-to back. Um, he was the but one to- three But Tony Pollard the didn't have- tag. Yeah, Tony um, Pollard uh, didn't sign his tag. So yeah, He didn't? I thought yeah. he did. But the other two, J- Josh Jacobs no, no, and... Um, Josh Jacobs and then... And Saquon Edward, did not. And, like, uh, and Saquon. So, you know, the running back market, even though... It's the very running back is a, no, Even though the running back is a dying position, it will be interesting. It'll be interesting to see who signs. And also be interesting to see who doesn't get signed. That's but very like true. I said, like, I said, we'll, yeah. like, like I said, we'll talk about this later. We'll like uh, let's focus on the Cowboys right now. Yeah. So going through some of their other things, and you we know, talk- they, they they do they have they definitely they definitely have the talent to you know make a deep play front. I just don't. But think they, they, they but just they never do. But they won't. Their problem, yeah. so they'll probably they lose never again do. in the first round or second round. I think um, San Fran- if San Francisco doesn't beat them, it's going to be Philly that beats yeah, them. Yeah, and probably. maybe if they have a really good year somehow, Seattle and somehow Minnesota. But other than that, I just don't maybe, see it. Yeah, I don't know if the Giants are quite good enough. I'm I'm really hoping the Giants go beat the Cowboys Week One at MetLife on Sunday Night Football. I think mm-hmm. it could be possible if 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 Saquon plays and everything goes right. But yeah, that's uh, we'll have to see because the Cowboys kind of similarly to the Eagles have kind of had the Giants number in recent years. But um, mm-hmm. yeah, going back to their additions, we talked about Trayvon Diggs. They also have Stephon Gilmore at the other corner, and he's also and they added, a no, he's an actually corner. he's an actually good cornerback. Yeah, he is still very very good. I mean, like in twenty twenty, he was just injured and whatnot, but he's still very good. Um, you also DPOY. Have, uh, let's not for, let's not forget he was, he was the DPOY after our Super Bowl year. Yeah. Um, you also have Brandon Cooks, who yeah, you know he he's still a thousand yard receiver, and he is very good. He is, you know, he was one of the bright, you know, lone gems on that uh, on the three and fourteen Texans, but he is still good. Mm-hmm. And you know, even if he wasn't where he was, where he when he was with New England or L.A., he's still really good. And you know, yeah. you just can't ignore him. He, he's and, still a na- he's still a name for the Cowboys. You got you still, still got yes. there's still C.D. Lamb, there's still Michael Gallup. Mm-hmm. Now you got yeah. Brandon Cooks. You got a yeah. you got a veteran wide receiver who's also mm-hmm. still who's also still a threat. Uh, a lot of tank and the gas, gas in the tank. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. I, I've always I've always liked Brandon Cooks. Like I was sad Me he too. got traded Me away. Too. Like I, mm-hmm. I was sad he got traded away after after uh after the 2017 season. But well, I was yeah. kind of happy that he got locked up by Stefan Gilmore in the uh in the Super Bowl, mm-hmm. obviously. But mm-hmm. uh but stuff like he, he's still an efficient player. He he's still uh he's still like that veteran presence. And I think like you know. From a guy who went to back to back Super Bowls with two different teams, you know, mm-hmm. and considering that the Cowboys are yet to even sniff in an NFC championship game since 1996, maybe the Cowboys could use some of that experience. I agree. I'm and say so speaking, too. Of, uh, uh, speaking of NFC championship game, we have the Philadelphia Eagles, probably the most well rounded team in football right now. I mean, there's no holes on this roster. Like the, like, I'd say the three most rounded teams in the end of, uh, well, all of football: Philadelphia, San Francisco, and Kansas City, and number well, four, can, since, and well, number Kansas, four, Cincinnati. Well, Kansas City. The thing about them is they are they're a good team, but like they just don't have the talent that they just don't have talent and depth at many you know spots. Like you know, yeah, and they but, and they somehow who's, accidentally won a Super Bowl again. Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> who's behind? Who's behind? Who's, yeah, and, of course it was accident. Uh, with Mahomes James, on one James line. Bra- I mean, the, no, James Bradbury threw the game for them. He did, well, and also but, Nick yeah. Sirianni with his stupid play calling. He did. Well, he didn't. He doesn't play. Call, he doesn't call plays anymore. That was a Shane Steichen. And, okay, well, Shane Steichen with his stu- yeah. with his well, drunken play he, calling. He, 
well, leaving the Chiefs wide open after they shut down both the Giants well, and the Niners. Well, he's the yeah. offensive yeah. coordinator. How the hell is he? Well, yeah, that? that's not his fault. That's, like, okay. that's Jonathan. That's all game. game. That's all game. So both fault. of those coordinators are out now, actually, which makes yeah, it but very But Steichen was good. I meant, like, Steichen would. He I would say so. The, I think the offense held up with the Eagles in the Super Bowl. The defense definitely did not. Whether it's like, a pass rush sure or a you should, secondary. Um, like, after, I think, a Tony's touchdown, oh, going yeah. that three and out, that really hurt yeah. them. Uh, that, the punt, that, yeah. yeah. The punt, <laughs> right, that, those sequence of events that really like, what the hell was it? That, like, like, what the hell was it? Tony that? taking it to, like, the five. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My longest punt return touchdown in Super Bowl, uh, punt right, return right, in Super right. Bowl history, and he almost scored. Thing is, the Eagles like they're very good see. still, though. But I mean, but where's know. the hole? Where's they the hole? Exactly. Poster? They just no, improved. No, no. They got um, they Jan Carter. They got good. Nolan Smith. They got DeAndre Swift. They have probably the one of the top offensive and defensive lines in the country. I mean, the secondary is pretty good. The receivers are great. The yeah. running let's backs not, are really Let's not good. forget. Like, I mean, pretty much all their players are from Georgia. Yeah, that's well, went good. to college in Georgia. Makes them pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Went they to college have, in Georgia. At least. They, no, I do no, not really see a whole you know, maybe safety, if anything. I mean, um, you know, well, Edmonds you, blankenship. You do have you do have Terrell Edmonds. Well, have, and, I mean, uh, Jane, was a... James Bradbury, I see, is kind of like there is kind of like their Eli Apple. Eli Apple is absolutely well, thrown. To off. be fair, Bradbury was good all year. Like you know, I mean, yeah, like on, sure until the moment when it, until the moment when it mattered, kind of like Eli Apple. Eli. I Apple well, single handedly ruined well, like Cincinnati's well, honestly, chances. Well, my twice think of Asante, in a row. Well, think of well, I, well, why not Asante Samuel, former Eagle, right? He was playing oh, all God. year, and then the, I, I hate yes, that, guy. that drop, yes, that drop. <laughs> it's just like that. He played good all year, but you know, in that one moment he played, you know, that was bad. But then again, they were giving willing to give him what thirteen million a year to resign there. That's pretty good for an All Pro player, and you know, yeah. That's it. I mean, yeah. like he played great all year. Like a lot of interceptions. I think he had a pick six week one. Um, he also had a pick in the divisional round against uh, New York, I think. But like he's a great player. They just have no holes. Safety. I mean, you have a former first rounder there. You have Reed Blankenship, and they signed. They signed, They drafted a safety. I mean, that's probably where the only hole is. And then they have to. I mean, like. I think, I mean, if Buda Baker gets traded, it's going to be here probably. Mm. I don't know how much they're going to pay yeah. him, but. Phil, you know, Philadelphia um, wouldn't pull any punches for that one. And like. They wouldn't, you know. I mean, like, they 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 need to, you know, get him. Like, if they do, that's it. I mean, like, I don't see how they're not going to go back to the Super Bowl unless, uh, you know, injuries pile up. Yeah. You know, if they fix that one area, they're good. Like, I just don't see any other weaknesses. I know. That's about it. That's the thing. Wherever they lost, they, they gained. They like, had a great draft. They had a great offseason. Like, I mean, their team mm-hmm. looks good. And I don't even see that many teams in the NFC who really compete. Like, maybe the 49ers, if their quarterback situation 40, is figured out, maybe. Like the, they're like the only like team, the team only who even has the... a chance. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And, it, and let's not forget, it. San Francisco, like, they put up a decent battle for, like, the first, like, for like the first quarter uh and like yeah first uh, half. until the until the but, injury yes they played yeah they, i mean like which is really unfortunate yeah. but you know that's what mm-hmm. it is yeah and san, san francisco played a good like 15 30 minutes of the nfc championship game with a third string mm-hmm. quarterback so. i think and, until 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 like about two minutes left in the first half they played good but then just you know after I think uh, Miles Sanders scored, Boston Scott scored, you know Jalen Hurts scored uh, in the third quarter. I think he just got out of there. It, it was just a downpour at that mm-hmm. point. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so and speaking of teams <laughs> in the West, another thing, team that I think is also you know we're going to go to the AFC West now. The Chargers they have a pretty good mm. roster too. That doesn't matter. Forget no, about that, coaching. That, Forget that, about that, coaching. They have a good like roster. The Chargers, the Chargers are again. just the Cowboy. The Chargers are just the <laughs> they're like the Cowboys of the, of the AFC. AFC. Oh, okay. Extreme, extremely overhyped offense. Uh, perennial, perennial. Except for they don't perennial, always. Do they always make it to no, the playoffs? They don't no, even think they really even make it to the playoffs. No, like all no, the time. No, the, that might be no, the The Chargers, the Chargers, like the pat, like you could describe the Chargers team. With for the past five years, with one word, overrated. Well, yeah, they have the a good team roster. as a whole. Yes, their roster. No, they have a great roster. They I don't do. know how. I was you know. looking the at char- their roster. They have like if if these guys were fantasy. I mean, let's look at it real quick. They have Justin Herbert. They have, they have two Austin Eckler, Keenan have, Allen, you know, Gerald Everett. Have, I mean, look at that. Look at those weapons. I mean, the defense they have. They have 
Joey yeah, Bosa. Cool. The, yeah, the yeah, Char- like, yeah. uh, listen, don't Derwin don't waste James, your time JC going Jackson. through the Chargers roster. It looks good, no, but like they're like the Cowboys once again. Like the playoff success isn't there. They'll yeah. find ways to lose games. I mean, like like what more can I say? Like I mean, I don't, I don't really know what else to say. Yeah. So. They, no, that's what, they that's have, what I'm saying. They don't have, waste your time on the Chargers. Yeah, they, I'm just they saying they're just the Cowboys good. of the AFC, and that is not a compliment. That is absolutely <laughs> no. Not it's a it's definitely not. You they're, know what the no. You know what these te- You know what the Cowboys and the Chargers are. They are they are the NBA's version of the Clippers. Like they, yes. they are, they are just yeah. talented in the regular season. And then they find a way to suck it all up in the first or second round, if they're mm-hmm. lucky to get to the second round, which that, they mm-hmm. usually don't. Mm-hmm. Both, yeah. all three of these teams share one thing in common: they are highly talented and highly suspect, aka but, yeah. overrated. Mm-hmm. The roster, not on uh, the, the roster is not overrated the team as a whole especially the coaching is very much you know no, you have all this talent no, brandon, all this Sta- brandon staley with his drunken play calling especially with those unnecessary fourth down calls like i don't know what the hell goes through his head all the time but he's seriously like he's, i honestly he, think he should he's trying been to be an offense he's trying to be an offensive no. coach but he's a defensive coach no. you know fix yeah. that yeah listen here's my thing i honestly think brandon staley should have been fired in his rookie year after he completely screwed it up against the raiders uh, like, you know uh, that well, tiebreaker game uh, i didn't think, i, I, mean, I like, think remember, he should have been fired okay i don't think so i think he should have been fired after jacksonville because remember in his first year this oh, guy okay yeah yeah and like, like this guy beat the chiefs in his first year as head coach in his first okay. game as in, in one of his first games as head coach okay I'm like well, sure so, so did know. oakland so did oakland oakland but like they didn't, but no, I'm talking or, about or La- Sally- Las Vegas. I think uh, as the, at the, what they were called in 2020. Uh, I honestly don't know. Yeah, they they beat an injury riddled team. I mean, like this was, you know, they beat the healthy, and you know, they beat the healthy Chiefs. That you can't, you and just that's, don't that's do that tough. on a regular basis. Chargers Chiefs is always like, a good after, game. After so. after Jackson. Yeah, after Jacksonville, he definitely should have been. No, given no the- he had no. Brandon Staley should have had two options. He should have one been fired as soon as soon as that uh, game winning field goal went through, or two the general or two Dean Spanos, the owner of the Chargers, should have said, "Brandon, you have to walk back to SoFi Stadium from uh, from Jacksonville. That's your only choice if you want to be if you want to be the coach. You have to walk back. Otherwise, you're fired." Speaking of uh, so, speaking of somebody on the hot seat. Let's move over to Las Vegas. They are probably going to be one of the no, worst they're teams. Just, you, they're, they're just a, are going to be they're a burning. They're a burning tire fire in a dumpster mm-hmm. fire. They have a they have talent at individual spots, but the yeah. team as a whole is just not there. Like very very questionable secondary, very very questionable offensive line. You know, I mean that's it. I mean like there's yeah. I mean like they don't and the only guy. They have that or no Max Crosby, I guess. Mm-hmm. Max Crosby, and, um, and let's not forget, let's not Devante forget Adam, Jacobs. Well, I'm, not sure I'm talking about on the defensive, oh, okay. yeah. talking, the defensive side, yeah, yeah, mainly I mean, Max Crosby, Crosby, Chandler Jones, Chandler Jones yes. they have ty- they have their new draft pick, Tyree Wilson, who mm-hmm. you know, Tyree Wilson, who's, yeah. I mean, it's not, it's he's not going to be that year one, you know, going to get you 12 sacks, it's going to take some time, but apart from that, he can go into a good pass rusher. Other than that, there's just like no good players on the Raiders defense after and, that. And let's like and you have let's also not forget the Raiders kind of uh Judas their be, their best player in the past 20 years, Derek Carr. Yeah. Their offense is like on paper, this should be one of the best you know, I know. offenses in the league. They have Devontae yeah. Adams, Hunter Renfro. They signed Jacoby Myers well below, you know, what other teams would have given him. Um I think they drafted Trey Tucker or somebody like that in the third round. Um, they also drafted a guy who was supposed to go at least fifteen or twenty picks earlier in. Michael yeah, Vegas, Vegas has a good receiving core. The problem is they have a good. Yeah, they the have good, is, they, they have, have a Pro Bowl tackle. The problem is their, their Miller. offensive line is is more porous than a sponge. They have Af- they, except for Colton Miller. Yes, I agree. And he's Jimmy, Gar- the, he's the only good player on that line. Jimmy Garoppolo, I don't even know if he's going to play because, like, you saw the thing in this contract where it's like, if he wasn't yeah. fully healthy, he could be he, terminated. So, like, before that, before before the end, before week one, and you know, I don't think they're just going to. I mean, like, after him, who do they have? They have a practice squad guy, and that's about exactly. it. Exactly. Like, you are. If you think that this Raiders team is going to make waves in twenty, they're not going to do it. You are sorely mistaken. You but, know they'll be it, happy we, to win but, five or six games. Listen, but here's the thing: we've been sorely mistaken about teams uh, being trash in the regular season, about teams being great in the regular season before. We've been surprised; anything could happen. 
but I'm not expecting anything out of well, Oakland. This I mean, Raider, yeah, Las I'm Vegas. Not, I'm, I'm not expecting anything. So let's hop on over to Denver. Uh, uh, yeah, I do yeah, want to spe talk about speaking of no Broncos expectations. Well. Speaking they, of no expectations. Well, yeah, they did hire Sean Payton, but, but you know, they just gave too much to acquire him. I think they gave up a first and second. Why would you do that? You have those are you know two quality picks. I meant like well, you know twenty nine. Well, some teams have been successful in trading for coaches. Uh, like you like guys, you have John Gruden, John Gruden yeah, John for the Gruden, Tampa Bay Box. Bill Belichick, of course, nobody can forget that. But then, other than that, you know, I mean, like his decision to hire re, to rehire Vince Joseph back was, you know, I thought it was suspect because I, mean, like, I mean, well, here's the thing: not... you can trust Vince Joseph on defense. You cannot trust him as a head coach. Well, you think I mean like Vince Joseph, right? His defense, it, his it's defense the same with was the... really bad last year, yeah, and you know, to me, it's like the same with the like no Rex Ryan. Up. It's to me, it's like the same with Rex Ryan. You don't mm -hmm. trust him to be to be a head coach, but he's a mm -hmm. good defensive coordinator. Well, now he's on uh, ESPN, yeah. so crap. So, but still, mm -hmm. like comparing uh comparing uh time periods. Like, I still, you know, I mean, like Vance Joseph, I mean, like I don't trust him, but like he, you know, he blitzes every other down, and you know his Arizona defense was really bad last year. Admittedly, injuries. It's Arizona, that, but still, it's, it's Arizona. Yeah, it's still really bad. I mean, like he, this guy, you know, he had the no fly zone one year, and then the next, it was you know pretty, you know, pretty bad. They had to hire Vic Fangio, and we all know how that went. So until you know, if, if he does okay at his job, if he gets them to like the level where they were last year, I mean. They should be okay it, that side of the ball. Because the Broncos have a solid defensive core. They actually yeah. do. Oh, yeah. yeah. They have all pros. They have, they have all pros at corner, at safety. And, you know, they drafted several linebackers. And, you know, but. Th this team uh, really hinges. Th the problem is this team really hinges on Russell Wilson and Sean Payton. Agreed. Yeah. Yes. If Can Sean Payton restore him to his, like, 2019 form where he was MVP up until like the final few games of the season. Or, this team is making a playoff run. Or even just or even just to a Russell Wilson who could comfortably throw the ball 15 yards or more. I'm like we saw this we saw this guy last year, those last two games, right? He he almost beat the Chiefs and he beat the Chargers, albeit with most of their starters out. But, but he played no, 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 that, that's wrong. That's wrong. Like most of the Chargers were not out during that game. Like the Chargers had the fifth seed. Well, the second half, and, yeah. And, and that like, idiot, they did start it, yeah. But and like, that, and that they... idiot Brandon Staley decides to start it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Team. What happens? Mike Williams, Mike, Mike Williams gets injured. A solid depth piece at wide receiver. And then what not happens? Solid depth piece. He's one. He's a great receiver. He's probably the biggest receiver in the league. You know, he has a no, really good no, go I, up and make no, those catches that nobody else can. Like, have. no, like because uh, like I think Keenan Allen's their number one. But it's like. Michael Williams is like usually their, their, their two, number right? two receiver. Yeah, but still, like with a but like even ha with, like having Brandon Staley taking good. the like Brandon Staley took the piss last year, but um and like single handedly cost cost the Chargers a playoff yeah. game. Let's focus on the usual. Broncos if we could. Yeah, let's focus yeah, on the yeah. Broncos. So yeah, you're right. Their offense, they have a good, you know, they have a great line. I mean, like you know, they have you know they hire they, they get Ben Powers on a good deal. I think they slightly overpaid for Mike McGlinchey. But then again, they have Garrett Bowles, who should be returning from his ACL injury. They have mm -hmm. a good line. Uh, their tight end situation is kind of suspect, I think. You know, yeah. um, they had to trade Noah Fant over to Seattle in the Russell deal. Uh, they drafted Greg Dulcich last year, who was pretty good. Um, I think Albert Okwegbonham was, you know, right. just like benched the entirety of last year. So they have, you know, depth of tight end is there. Uh, but you don't have that, you know, tight end guy that you know you should be able to go to. Then again, we have Sean Payton. He uh, he he coached Jimmy Graham for a while in New Orleans, and you know, and Benjamin Watson too for uh, Jitesh, if he remembers that name. Yep, yep, I remember Ben Watson. Ben Watson, yep, and you know that those guys should be pretty good. Now you have at receiver, you have Jerry Judy, KJ Hamler, uh, Jerry Judy. Sutton. No, KJ Hamler has been, he's not been able to stay healthy. Like this, this is his make not, or break year. He is not. Jer but, mm -hmm. Jerry and Judy then, then you, at least has a lot of potential. Like KJ mm -hmm. Hamler, I mean, I, I would know. Well, speak I of it, speaking of, yeah, speaking of injury, um, Tim Patrick's also coming back, and then they drafted you oh, know, that's right. Marvin Mims. You know, that's a really good receiver core. I mean, like, there's mm -hmm. like, 
That that no, is a very should, solid be, five. It should be a good receiving core. It should. Oh be. yeah, it it should be if they can all stay healthy, which is the for, which is the problem. But, like, but uh, if Russell like Wilson he, plays good, this team is good. That's it. You, that's it. That's literally yeah. all you can say. Russell Wilson plays good if they're decent. I mean, I the like their. Plays at the yeah. level they were last I like year. the defensive line. I like. I mean, they they have like now they have Frank Frank Clark, Zach Allen. They have um yeah. a, a linebacker. They have Joby Jewell, who's really good. Randy like, Gregory. Was, we mentioned like, the secondary. The, Bron- the Bronc. Um, the receivers are yeah, good. We just the Broncos, mentioned those. Can you... It really depends on the also, offense like, and, and Russell Wilson. You guys are absolutely right because last year the offense just looked unwatchable at times. We had the fans counting down. The, the play clock because they're taking mm-hmm. too many delays yeah. of games and Russell Wilson was just mm-hmm. beyond awful and the Rams like blew them out. Let's not forget like l- last year let's not forget last year they like out of a 17 game season they couldn't put put up 17 points in like 12 of those game, games or something. They were yeah. they were like in games they in games where they scored under uh, like 17 points. I believe their record was something like 2 and 9. That's horrible. This isn't mm-hmm. the nineteen seventies anymore. You can't win yeah. you can't win games scoring like scoring sixteen points and then praying to the football gods <laughs> that you hold on to the win. That's speaking not gonna of, happen in today's NFL. Speaking of teams that have no problem that have to, uh, no problem scoring the ball, you have the reigning Super Bowl champions to our Let's to go, Kansas Green, City. The Chiefs. Oh I mean, dear, like, you are enough. Sorry, yeah. Uh, Nothing's still well, going on. Okay. So. Well, anyway, their second defense, favorite team. Their, de- their defense should be good. It, it's because you if, like Kadarius Tony. If, they're not your favorite Actually, I don't like your favorite team. That's kind of a problem now. Yeah, they're not. They're really not. But um, yeah. It used to be the okay. Giants if, and Steelers, yeah. actually, for me. But oh, it's kind of been fun. Oh, Jesus anyway. Christ. Oh. All right. Anyway, let's get let's get back okay, on if, track okay. with, the, with I, the Chief. Yeah. I think, if the, I think their defense is good if and only if Chris Jones gets that deal done. Yeah, he needs Otherwise, they are Finger, losing. Fingers a... crossed he doesn't. Fingers crossed he doesn't. Well, he is one of the best players, regardless of position in the league. He is, you know, very, very good at, at getting to the quarterback. I think he had like 15 and a half sacks, and he had his first few playoff sacks ever against uh, – in the, in t- that completely t- uh, turned the uh, Cincinnati game around. Um, if he resigns, they're good. I mean, like they have – they have good – they have – a lot of cornerback depth, which is also good. Um, they also have a pretty good linebacker core. They signed Drew Tranquil. Okay. They have. I, I'd say their linebacker core is actually, is honestly underrated. Is very underrated. And then you have a- Anthony um, Hitchens is a is a solid player. Then they got uh, Nick, Nick Bolton. Didn't Hitchens retire or something? Uh, oh right, right. Well, you well, have I'm Nick thinking, Bolton. I'm thinking of the previous year, I think. Yeah. Yeah, you have Nick Bolton, you have Drew Tranquil, and then now at edge rusher, kind of linebacker ish. You have you drafted uh George Carlos last year. You drafted um uh, you drafted Felix Uzama, Felix and Dickie Uzama this year. Mm-hmm. So they're pretty good if Chris Jones gets you know gets his deal, which he should. There's no reason to you know think that he shouldn't. But you know I know contract talks aren't going well, but they have to resign him. Otherwise, it's just gonna. No, be they, they don't have to. Like Chris Jones could always take like a one year, three million dollar deal with the Patriots or something. Like they don't have to resign well, him. Well, I mean, like if you, I mean, if you're getting fifteen and a half sacks this year, nobody's gonna be paying you three three million. They're gonna be start paying you thirty million. You know, no, he definitely no, no, no. deserves that. He no. is, you know, the. I mean, you should have no, seen. I'll him tell in the you Super one player Bowl who does like, not deserve that. That's Joey Bosa. Nick Bosa deserves that money. Joey Bosa does yeah. not. Mm-hmm. And then on the offensive side, I mean, like. They, you have Mahomes. Are you really? And then they have a great offensive line. I mean, like, sure, the field they, they lost a couple really guys. bad in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. They, uh, I know Andrew Wiley's gone. If their tackle spots are good, uh, this offense is, you know, is going to be the Chiefs' offense. You know, Donovan Smith. I personally don't think he's going to make the final he, roster. He was no, he was he was a liability for the box all huge, last season. Like, that, that's that's understating no, it, no. I think. Yeah, um, he was a magnet for hold, holding penalties all of yes. last season, being, being yes. like and the they were quite a few for touch- Tom Brady. There were quite a few touchdowns, you know, brought back just because of a holding call on him. I think one against uh, San Francisco, one against New Orleans. Um, mm-hmm. If he, you know, if he, like, if he fixes that and he performs at an okay level, I'm like, it should be fine. And um, also, let's not forget, let's not forget, Andy Reid's still their head coach. And the Chiefs like, should just be fine. Like they it honestly be, 
Mm-hmm. It would honestly be yeah. a disappointing they season don't have, for them mm-hmm. if they lost yeah. in the AFC Championship. Mm-hmm. That yeah. would be a disappointing season yeah. for them. I mean, they don't have like that speed guy at uh, the receiver though. That's the one. That's the one hole I see mm. on their roster. They don't that's have the that. They don't. They, they don't Harman's need a speed guy. They don't. Guy. They, don't yeah. they don't need to. But like, it's always helpful to have one, right? I mean, like, uh, like a lot of other teams in the league have I mean, that they, one. They speed perfectly guy. won the Super Bowl last year without with their, their main speed guy and arguably the fastest yeah. dude in the league, Tyreek Hill. Like he's yeah. he's too busy. Like, I mean, he had a monster mm-hmm. season in Miami. Don't get me wrong, mm-hmm. but. Right. Yeah. The Chiefs show the Chiefs showed that they're adapting. There's no reason to think that they shouldn't be okay. There's no reason to think that they should that they I think they'll you, that, you know. I mean I, I can cro- I, think I can fine. cross yeah. my fingers. I can cross my fingers for a four and thirteen season from the from the Chiefs. I've got my fingers crossed. Hopefully it happens. Probably won't, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah. I mean like who, it's just who a loaded AFC. So I, think it's but I, be the Chiefs I, I still think they can come out on top. I, I I'd put it this way. Like for my first of four rankings for the AFC West. Kansas City, Denver, Chargers, uh, ooh, and then really? the Raiders. Yes. Over you, I mean, like, you, like over, uh, L.A. over Denver. That's yes. interesting. I'm mean, like, I that, no, 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 it, no. I put Denver over L.A. I put Denver over L.A. It depends. I mean, like, it de- it depends. I mean, like, how they perform against other teams as well. I mean, like, I think that they might. They, it's very possible you could flip. That's you know two A two B. And then Las Vegas is at four. Well, so well, I think the one and four spots are kind of locked. Yeah, it's just um whoever I mean, like if they're like the games of the past, you know, this is wide open. But, I, you know, I'd still put, I don't see. I'd still put Denver as the second at, at the second spot of the um NFC West. I mean, mm-hmm. excuse me, AFC, AFC West. West. Yeah, mm-hmm. I really. But I think that because I, think I Chiefs... don't, I don't believe in the Chargers mm-hmm. at all. Like mm-hmm. people should I think, just yeah. like. The Cowboys people are to stop believing in the Chargers. Like, come on, listen. Yeah. We have we have four year olds who believe in the Tooth Fairy, and we still have forty year old men who still believe that the Chargers can win a Super Bowl. It's never going like, to happen. Even never. though they do, yeah, I just don't see any way that you know they, they're a good team, but they just don't have the coaching. The coaching is not there. I mean, if they hired Sean Payton, there's definitely a chance. But like you know, yeah, you have the guy with arguably the strongest arm in football in Justin Herbert. You have a guy who can maximize his talents. But then again, you just you know, and you also have a coach who talent that's and you also have a coaches. coach who yep. uh, encourages drunken play off, uh, drunken play calling during the moments when it matters. Yeah. And I guess Agreed. let's wrap that's this up. That's how they choked last year. Yeah, and they I guess last year big uh, time. Let's wrap this up uh, with the NFC East yeah. predictions. I got Eagles at one. I got Giants at two. Cowboys at three, and then Washington at four. I, like I have that. Philly, I uh, Dallas, and uh, I. I still just think Dallas is, you know, they're good. They're, it should like, be. So, so it's like Dallas, so it's like the York, what, it's, I hope it's, it's like the AFC West for me. We agree on we agree mm-hmm. on one and four, but you could flip two and three. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, like, yeah, I guess you could say though. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all we're gonna have time for. I love to keep it going, but this has been the first episode of preview series. We'll be back next week with the AFC East and NFC West. So. Keep watching and have a good weekend. That's this week. We just did that. Oh, yeah, you're right. Never mind. Have a good day. All right. Yep. That's the show.